let's go ahead and go through a second scenario with that same sale of the depreciable asset. Um, same asset as before, all the same information as before, but now we're going to assume that on 4 one the equipment was sold to an outside party and had a loss of $20,000. So all we're doing is changing the sale date. Uh, case 1, we assumed it was sold on January 1st. Now we're assuming it's being sold uh, after three months, on April 1st of the year. Uh, let's go ahead and do the elimination entries this time. Um, using that, you know, as I as I mentioned in the in the solution to the first case here, um, we have two different ways of handling that accumulated depreciation. In the solution to case one, I rolled the accumulated depreciation adjustment into that first S entry. Let's go ahead now and do it as a second entry, just just we just we can see both ways done. So we have our two elimination entries. Uh, again, we eliminate Little's equity for some unknown and irrelevant amount. We go ahead and record the increase of $40,000 in the equipment. And that goes to the investment and the non-controlling interest. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to need a separate entry to remove the accumulated depreciations. We're going to go ahead and debit accumulated depreciation for $50,000 and credit the equipment for $50,000. Okay, so again, those two entries combined end up getting rid of the accumulated depreciation and reducing the equipment account by $10,000, leaving us with a net increase in the equipment of $40,000. Okay, um, let's go ahead and do our amortization entry. And again, we're using uh, $40,000 undervaluation, amortized over five years at $8,000 per year. And we're using a separate accumulated depreciation account. Okay, so again, this was 2020. We do the same thing for 2021. And again, in 2021, we have to be careful of, there's one little thing we have to do. And that is last year, we created this differential of $40,000 and then we amortized $8,000 of it. So we're carrying forward $32,000. Now, we're gonna carry that $32,000 forward. We're gonna have the equipment at 40,000 and a $8,000 credit to accumulated depreciation. Okay, so again, between the two of these things combined, there's the $32,000 that we're carrying forward. And again, we do another, we, we repeat that entry to eliminate the date of acquisition accumulated depreciation. Okay, 2022. 2022, we do the same thing again. Um, let me go ahead and get that all on one page. Now we're carrying forward $16,000 of accumulated depreciation. Again, last year, I apologize for scrolling back and forth like this. Last year, we created $8,000 of accumulated depreciation, and we added $8,000 to it. Again, this, this separate entry, um, eliminating the date of acquisition accumulated depreciation, that one's sort of in a category by itself. We don't mess with that. We just repeat it year after year after year. So again, we credit 8,000, another credit 8,000, which means we're carrying forward 16,000. We repeat this entry the same as we always do. This is 2022. And we take another year's worth of depreciation. Okay, 2023. Here's where we come to the year of sale. In 2023, again, we're gonna now carry forward $24,000 of accumulated depreciation. We repeat this uh, entry to eliminate the date of acquisition accumulated depreciation again. But now for the amortization, recall that this asset was being sold to a third party on April 1st, 2023, so after three months. If $8,000 is depreciation for a full year, then we want depreciation for three months or one fourth of a year. So one fourth of 8,000 is $2,000. And so that's gonna be our amortization for for 2023. But again, now the asset has been sold. Uh, as part of these elimination entries that we've done, we've created this equipment, we've carried forward this accumulated depreciation, we, um, you know, we did this, and we have that. So basically, we have to remove this asset and its accumulated depreciation from our balance sheet. So basically, all that stuff has to be undone or reversed. 
So let's do these one at a time. Equipment, we have a debit of $40,000 uh, and a credit of $50,000. So those two things netted together are a $10,000 credit. So we have to eliminate that by debiting equipment for $10,000. Again, that's simply getting rid of the net equipment there of $10,000 on the credit side. Next for accumulated depreciation. We've got a $24,000 credit, a $50,000 debit, and a $2,000 credit. So that works out to 50 minus 26 is a $24,000 net debit. And we have to get rid of that with a credit. So what's, you know, this, so basically we, we've undone, we've gotten rid of all vestiges of the equipment and the accumulated depreciation. So what's this missing $4,000? Well, again, that's going to be the remaining unamortized differential that we're now going to write off as an adjustment to our loss on sale. Now, if you're wondering, and I was for a second, which is why I sort of paused as I was writing this, in case one, we had a $16,000 remaining unamortized differential that was treated as an adjustment to the loss on sale. This time it's only $14,000. Why is there the $2,000 difference? Well, because, because we took another $2,000 of depreciation expense. Um, again, as an alternative, it's, some, you know, it's good having um, different ways to do this, except sometimes it makes things more confusing. Um, Again, all throughout this process, we've been treating this as a separate entry. We can continue. We can continue to do that now. We can go ahead and again that that entry had no effect on net assets, right? We simply got rid of fifty thousand dollars in accumulated depreciation and fifty thousand dollars in equipment. There was you know it was a wash in terms of our net assets. Nevertheless, those accounts are being recorded as adjustments on our balance sheet we have to get rid of those adjustments because the asset no longer exists. So we can go ahead and get rid of that as one entry. So basically just reversing that. And then as a separate thing, deal with um, this business, the, the other accounts related to the differential. So again, so this is going to be the same thing. We're going to go ahead and um, credit equipment for $40,000. We've got accumulated depreciation, a $24,000 credit, a $2,000 credit. So we've got $26,000 of accumulated depreciation we've got to get rid of. And again, what's missing is $14,000, and it's that same $14,000 we had you know, two entries above. It's just presented in a slightly different, just presented in a slightly different fashion. Okay, hopefully that will help.